this segment, we're going to be, as promised, sewing signatures. Uh, I've already said a brief word about needles. Now a brief word about the thread I use. Again, my opinion only. I find the thinnest, strongest thread commonly available. How strong do, does it need to be? Simply unbreakable with your bare hands. I joke, you draw blood before you actually break the thing. Yeah, don't actually draw blood. That's a that's just a turn of phrase. This is part cotton, part polyester. I believe it's commercially known as button and canvas thread. It is extreme. Oh, th sorry. This may be shoe thread. I, I uh, was able to find some shoe thread. Uh, extremely strong and uh, very, very thin. Thinness is important because we have, what did we say, 40, 45 signatures here. If you imagine the swell of the spine, it's already got a natural swell uh, from the folded paper. Anytime paper is folded, you can never get a fold absolutely crisp, and you're going to get an extra dimension at the fold end as opposed to the foredge, where it's not folded, just two sheets of uh, the thickness of two sheets of paper. You multiply that umpteen times, even without sewing, your signature, your uh, uh, text block spine is going to be a little larger, a little thicker than the foredge. In addition to that, for every signature, this is pretty thin stuff, but for every thi signature, theoretically, you're going to have this thickness adding to the bulk of the spine. You need to reduce that as much as possible. Uh, the most effective way of many ways is to start with the thinnest thread you can get. By the way, just as an aside, if you are doing just one project, don't have access to really strong thread, and want to make this particular item as strong as possible, just need a little bit of thread, relatively small amount, a matter of yards instead of spools. You could try dental floss, believe it or not. It's a bit thicker, uh, but uh, it's commonly available. I stick with the unflavored, frankly, uh, and it should work. It should uh, last a good long time. Uh, as far as the professionals who insist upon using linen thread, that's fine. Linen thread, generally, there's all sorts of plies and twists, etc. Linen thread is going to tend to be thicker than any modern product you can. It's not, or, this is not organic, etc. Uh, who knows, maybe the polyester will uh, have some appreciable deterioration in a century or two. That's possible. Uh, I don't know the specs on it, but I'm guessing this is going to be good for a long, long, long time. Uh, undoubtedly, in my opinion, will outlast the life, the remaining life of the paper. So, that's it for thread. Now, beginning the sewing, we take the signatures. You recall uh, how I did the holes? I have not taken the gatherings apart uh, because I have found it's very convenient if you leave them done up like this, take one gathering at a time, and make sure you always uh, put it aside while you're working on the first until you get the, the second, etc. Put it aside face down and you will always know for sure. You should still double check occasionally, 
but you'll always know for sure that since these were interleaved at the center of each signature, you'll always know that is the center. You won't have to hunt for it a second time. It saves a little time. Now, first signature is going to be a little bulky because of all the reinforcements we put on it. Always, again, knock it up at the upside down, knock it up at the top margin, or the top uh, edge. You want that perfectly aligned for aesthetic reasons. So, we have that ready to go. And there again, I was not at the actual center. That's the ultimate test. Just make sure you are always at the absolute center. All right, we're ready to go. Take our needle. We've made the new holes with this needle. This needle's a little small for the original holes, which was cut with a uh, knife, or uh, sorry, a, 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 it was sawn with a saw. So the kerf is oversized, but can't do anything about that. Take a goodly length of thread. I run it through my fingers using my fingernail to get rid of much of the excess twist. Most every thread is going to have a twist from production, the way it's made, and also uh, it being on a bobbin for most of its life. So the twist, you'll probably see examples as we proceed, the twist can accumulate as you draw thread through tight places. Uh, the twist tends to uh, gather and there could be times when you just wind up with a knot. When that happens, simply take your time and untangle the knot and proceed. Never ever leave a knot. I would cut thread and re-tie it together before I would leave a knot in a book. Then that's me. So, straightforward, have it open in the middle. Take your, uh, using your finger underneath to sense when the point has come through and to make sure it does come through the and you don't miss a section. In and out. You always enter a signature, always, from the outside. You always exit from the inside, always. There are no exceptions to that. And if you think about it, it's counterintuitive that, or it's oxymoronic, whatever, that uh, you could do anything else. So when you're starting, oh, do I start from the inside, the outside? It's always start from the outside in and leave the signature from the inside out. I always, especially beginning with troublesome signatures like this, I always like to put my finger on the inside when I'm going into the signature to make sure I I'm going through all the holes and not missing one. That may not sound right, but you'll know what I'm talking about the first few times it happens to you. You want to leave a reasonable length of thread at the top, just enough to tie off with the thread as you go through the second time. So. We uh, are double checking now. We're at page 16. This should be, see how the uh, signatures naturally divide. 
here is the signature mark C, which, if you recall, our first signature actually comprises one double page uh, signature, which we attached to the second signature. So this first signature represents A and B, so that's quite right. Here's page 17, signature C. This may sound very picky and very obvious, but sooner or later you will miss a signature, put it in the wrong order sequence. Things happen. The more you double check, the less likely that's going to happen. Now, we exited. In this case, we started at the top. It matters not one whit, as far as I know, whether you stop at the, start at the top or bottom. At any rate, in this case, we started with the first signature at the top, and uh, exited at the bottom. We then go straight across and enter the second signature, the next signature, from the bottom, and work our way up. Don't worry about excess unless, of course, it gets tangled, in which case you want to free it. Don't worry about excess. We'll pull it all tight at the very uh, end of uh, a double, each double signature. Now, I only sew one way. There are many, many ways. You're not going to learn them here. I sew on tapes. By and large, almost never sew on cord. We've covered that. I use a cross-stitch pattern. You'll see it in the as we go along. I won't spend too much time explaining exactly what I'm doing. I'll, since this is video, I'll hope you can see uh, exactly what I'm doing. The reason I do it this way, it's not that much more effort and it's tri triple redundant. Uh, it has triple redundancy for security. When this book is all done and someone opens it for whatever reason, there'll be a loop, uh, let's see, there'll be a loop here, a loop in the center, and a loop down here. If for some reason this loop is cut, it should have little, if any, effect on the integrity of this signature to the text block, because you will still have one, uh, sorry, two loops still holding everything together. So that's why I say it's a uh, triple redundancy. Interlocking everything means, and then backing it with adhesive, that means you can lose one segment for some reason and it still is not going to come apart. This is as strong a and per, as permanent a sewing technique as I could hope for. Don't worry about the tapes. We'll get to that in just a, a minute. You see it's just simply looping under or over. Uh, and then, of course, always back in. I'm not... I'm paying more attention to describing this than to the actual work in normal circumstances. I do this automatically, and you will come to that very shortly, too, that point, where it's all automatic. You put a good movie on, and other than uh, checking for uh, double, triple checking for the right signature, the pagination, etc., the order of things as you proceed, other than that, this becomes second nature. Do you go over or under? It really doesn't matter. Just be consistent. For aesthetic reasons, when this is done, uh, whatever uh, technique you use, just be consistent, and you'll wind up with a very pretty sewing pattern. Nobody will ever see it, but It'll be smooth and flat, as flat as can be, etc.
etc. All right, now we've just finished two signatures. This is kind of important. Line up the two top edges as best you can. You want that right on the button. Pull. It's always straight. If you pull any thread against the fold, you're going to run the risk of tearing. There's no reason to do that. You want to establish tension all along the way. The best way is to pull in line with the signature. You're watching this, um, uh, this um, connecting loop at the very bottom. When that is snug, that's enough. Then pull the other one and just make sure there's no excess slack here and that's fine. If you pull too hard, you're going to buckle the paper and that's going to create too much tension and distort your finished spine. So you want it tense but not so tight that it's uh, puckering the paper. Now, all we need to do, I'm going to, hmm, normally I just put this, at this point, I just put it between my legs and do this. I may have to do that off camera because this just isn't working. I apologize about that. Make a simple double loop knot. That's a simple knot. Um, a simple knot looped over twice. Uh, that's always what I do. I mean, it just makes for a, a tighter grip. There's one. You probably can't see this anyhow. And there's two. All right. There's there's one. Pull it up snug. Again, double check your upper edge for alignment. Pull it up snug and do it again. The old thing about square knots and granny knots, I don't care. At this point, this is going to be encased in, in uh, adhesive and it's not going to be a big deal. Normally, just put these between your knees double knot, uh, each one double looped, uh, and that's good to go. Now, that's not going to come apart. You've already established tension on the first two signatures. Now you can proceed with the tedious work of one signature after the other until you run out of thread and we will cover that in just a moment how to the quickest and easiest what well, in my opinion it's all in my opinion quickest and easiest way of joining the next piece of thread here we go you've already looped over you're not interested in the first signature anymore the only thing you're interested in is the second signature you need to get between the signatures so I simply take my needle and find the spot, move the needle over so it comes up underneath the previous crisscross. I'm only interested in this signature so the loop is coming out of the middle signature and that's the one I want to catch and that's all I want to catch. That may be very difficult to see but when you see the finished product, it will all hopefully make more sense. So out, straight forward, and again, I am only interested in this loop right there. It may look complicated, it may look very fussy, but trust me, you do it after you sew your first book, it's not that big a deal anymore. The entire process of book binding is just a long series of very straightforward procedures. The trick is to learn all the procedures and then practice. You need 
and speed, if you, certainly if you're going to do it for a living. And you also need to maintain certain standards, of course, for quality. You are your own quality control inspector. Now, we've just done three. Oh, at the, when I came out at the last time, I'm sorry, I should have pointed out. You then interlock. You go through the first, the, the previous two signatures. You go over the connecting loop and draw it through, thereby, again, tying it, literally putting a, a virtually a, a small knot in. It helps maintain the tension of what you previ previously done, but it also is one more redundant uh, safety precaution. You are tying in top and bottom every signature as you go along, uh, one to another, to another, to another. That, in addition to the tape and the cross uh, hatching of the tape loops, this is going to be an extremely strong sewing. That's why, once I learned this technique, everyone talks about various sewing styles. I don't understand. If you're doing this for a living and want the strongest type for your customer, the, the most, the longest lived, the relatively quickest and easiest way of putting a book together again, why you would do anything but this technique, I don't know. I don't want to get into arguments. If you know a better way, fine. This is what I have always done and will continue to do. Now again, if you can see this first loop right here, when the tapes go in, which is going to come very shortly, uh, you'll probably be able to see better, although it's white on white. Uh, you'll probably be able to see how you can catch the loop. And I am using my fingers to open the signature. It's difficult enough to go through the outside of a fold, so you want all the help you can get. There you go. It also helped that, uh, and we are disregarding that center hole right, where is it, right there. We don't need that. That's not involved in uh, the tape. So we go in between, find that loop, pop out under it, and back in, back out. At this point, Again, align everything. Watch down here this connecting loop. That's all you're interested in. Take your thread, pull it, uh, pull the slack out of it until it tightens up. There's your tension. Now, take your needle, go through the previous two between them, under the connecting kettle stitch, draw it in. Boom. Now, we have, as shown earlier, we have already cut our tapes. We now have the beginning of a text block. If you tried to introduce your tapes at the very beginning, it's a nightmare. Also, you may wonder why I'm not using a sewing frame. I actually forgot the name of it because I've got... Uh, three of them, uh, but I never use them. I used to, and then I realized, uh, at least with smaller books, they take too much time. I do this for a living, so time is money. They take too much time to set up and are too limiting in actually, and space also, uh, and they're just generally too limiting. I can do a much faster job. Uh, this way without a, just using my bare hands. So at any rate, uh, now you have some substance. You have an actual beginnings of a text block. So one was bigger than the other, wider, so it's this one. 
I take my needle and very carefully go under every single loop of thread and then I move it back and forth just to make sure I haven't missed any. Now, using that, and since there is some rigidity to the tape, I insinuate the tape underneath. And if your needle has caught every loop, then uh, the uh, doing it this way, the tape is going to uh, not miss any loops either. There you go. I hope you can all see that. That's It's as straightforward as that. Now, because we're working with just holding this with our hands, uh, I found it much more convenient to have the excess back and periodically just draw, leave about, you know, an inch uh, free and clear for your needle to get around in and out. Uh, but you don't need the all the flapping, uh, all the excess up here. Better, I think, uh, to have the excess down there. At any rate, we'll do the second one. Again, top or bottom entry, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you get every single... I know this is difficult for you to see. We have the camera zoomed in, but probably not zoomed in that close. At any rate, there is... Get this excess out of there. There is the... Uh, loops. Here is the tape. Insinuate. Just work it in. And I have cut these tapes slightly... Sm uh, uh, narrower than the gap between the holes. Uh, if you cut it right on the button, or God forbid, a little too tight, uh, you're going to have a real problem doing this doing this uh, procedure. Also, as you sew along, you want some clearance between the, en the edge of the tape and your hole. Otherwise, you're going to be constantly uh, catching the tape itself with your needle point and that's that's just there's no reason for that that just uh, slows things down all right there are your two tapes now we will proceed you'll see how it gets a little easier with tapes again as I take a signature out I just eyeball the signature mark we're up to G already. Fingers inside, opening that signature. All of this sounds very complex, I know. It'll all be second nature. Just do your first book, then do your second, and suddenly you'll be dozing off in the middle of sewing. It'll be so straightforward and mindless work. There are, again, exceptions. There are books that are so complicated, the pagination, etc., that uh, you have to keep your wits about you. But generally, this is what I call a Joe job. Frankly, this is what I put uh, Clint Eastwood movie on and have it going in the background, keep me from falling asleep. Done, aligned, tension, watch that loop, that's tight, through the last two signatures, out, not, done, on to the next. Now we're just going to proceed, add infinitum. Uh, we have 35, maybe 40 signatures left. Take an hour, an hour and a half. You're going to meet us back here, and we'll be ready to back this.